Today's expedition is to locate the pipework of the Valley Siphon, which is part of the Bryce's Water Race. The Valley Pond is located between Branksome and Derby and is the flooded Bryce's extended tin mine. From here we will head up the slopes of Valley Creek to find the tail of the Valley Siphon. The flooded Bryce's extended mine was worked in 1905 and was a reworking of the older Ringarooma Valley Tin Mining Company in the 1880s. Using a powerful suction dredge driven by a 500 horsepower steam engine, it could lift 100 cubic yards of tin drift 100 feet to the sluice boxes. Between 1905 to 1909, 428 tonnes of tin were produced and a small quantity of gold. However, the mine closed in 1909 to be reopened by the Bryce East Central Company in the 1920s. We set off from the old roadway that skirted close to the valley pond, detoured around private property and set off up the hill. Using a list map of the area, combined with a GPS tracker program, we headed up the slope to cross the location of the siphon. We had no idea what was left of the siphon, and the area is quite thickly forested and uneven, with rocky outcrops covered with slippery moss and cutting grass. Initially we looked for the pipeline close to the creek, but then using the GPS tracker, followed the line of the siphon on the map, hoping to find any remains of the pipes. Pushing through the bush and frequently taking detours around steep boulders and thick scrub, we came across groups of rusting pipes. These were the pipes left behind after much of the pipeline had been recovered by Vern Woods in the 1960s to rebuild the pipeline that carried water from the Frome Dam to the Pioneer Tin Mine. Further up the hill we came across a substantial pipeline structure. This was the tail end of the siphon where the water was forced vertically upwards by the pressure from the pipeline across the other side of the valley. This is how it looked in 1901. Where sections of the pipe were joined, workmen would crawl into the pipe with a bucket of tar to seal the joint and make it watertight. Interesting how they put the bend in it. I don't know whether they'd be hot riveted or cold riveted, what do you reckon? I don't know. Surely it wouldn't go to the trouble of bringing, heating up a furnace of some kind. Unless they've prefabricated most of it. This complicated section was probably made elsewhere then brought in by wagon and assembled in situ using collars of steel filled with lead to make them watertight. This part of the siphon and water race is now being used by the Blue Derby Kingsway mountain biking and we were lucky enough to meet two of the riders on the track. Go along there, I want to get a shot of you going back along there. I'll just get round the corner. Don't run over me. <laughs> Happy day. Good biking. See ya. See ya.
this section of the race probably had wooden fluming to carry their water over difficult rocky ground. This concrete structure could have been a type of holding tank that stored water before entering more fluming. If we could turn back the clock to 1901, from here we would have seen work gangs constructing the fluming and the framing to hold the vertical siphon pipes. In the background at lower right, you can see the construction tramway and pipes stacked ready for use. The steel plates for the siphon were made and punched in Pittsburgh, USA. These plates were rolled and riveted in Scottsdale by Meafan Ferguson, who also erected the siphon. Special road trucks carried the pipes to the lowest part of the siphon and then hauled up by winches or horses with block and tackle. The pipes were either rolled across on skids or lifted via derrick and placed in position. Here we can see the trestle bridge that had to be built across the mine workings of the Ringarooma Valley Company that worked the valley in the 1880s. The construction tramway that carried pipes to the siphon can also be clearly seen. Here you can see how the finished siphon looked with water being forced upwards around the bend to flow out into the wooden flumeway at left. The water for the Bryce's race came from the Ringarooma River and Dunn's Creek, a tributary of the Morris River. It was nearly 50 kilometres long. In places the race was dug into relatively soft ground but in many areas the race had to be rock walled and in some cases huge rocks blasted out of the way. All of this was needed to supply high pressure water to the hydraulic water cannons used to blast the alluvial ground and release the tin. Like many mining operations, the Bryce's extended tin mine created a small settlement known as a valley. A row of houses ran alongside the mine hole and the main road to Derby. Although some sources said there were no shops, this photo suggests otherwise. As the mining operations closed down in the 1950s, the families moved on, and today only one vacant house remains of this little community. Returning from the tail of the siphon, we retraced our path back to the valley pond, stopping once again to marvel at the enterprise, industry and skills needed to construct the Bryce's water race and its four siphons. Leaving the valley pond today, it is easy to understand why few people remember the hustle and bustle and toil of the construction workers and tin miners who worked hard to wrestle the once precious tin from the ground. The alluvial river flats of the Ringarooma River have reverted to agricultural use and the sounds of new enterprises. Blue Derby mountain biking and bike trails from Derby to Branksome. Maybe some signage is needed at key points along the mountain bike trails, near historic relics, allowing riders to enjoy the area's rich mining heritage. <laughs>